Hey folks, Devin here with BestMakerOutL.com. In this video, I'm actually making some river cane arrows. So while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and show you the process for straightening river cane and bamboo. This is river cane that I cut in Arkansas and let it dry. It's been used for all sorts of things, including outlittle darts and arrows. In the process, I'll show you to straighten it. You can use for either outlittle darts or arrows. Just remember, if you do cut it, it's been uh, cut down drastically from its original range. It's a really cool plant. It filters material really well. Uh, fertilizers going down into rivers. It's a great uh, filter. And uh, it was used for all sorts of things culturally. So protect the integrity of the patches. Just make sure you don't take too many pieces from a, from a, uh, a healthy patch. Uh, and this is bamboo from Asia that I bought as uh, tomato steaks makes great arrows as well and the process is pretty much the same. I use a heat gun so I'm just going to turn this on to its low setting um, and the process I use is basically I'm going to heat up and straighten each segment and so I'll straighten the segments first. The piece will actually end up being probably even more crooked than I started, but then I'll come back and I'll straighten each node and straighten it entirely. It really doesn't take much heat, especially for an arrow sized piece. What's going to happen is it's going to get just where it's a little bit too hot to touch, and you can see the natural wax coating start to shine on there starts to feel a little bit tacky. You don't want to get it too hot. So that should do it right there. I'm just going to roll it on my thigh gently. And if it's willing to take a bend at this point, you'll know it. There you go. So I'll cut up the next segment now. If you get it too hot, what tends to happen is that it will crease when you bend it. And wherever it creases, that's going to form a weak spot that can break later on when you're using it as a projectile. You might be able to save it, especially if the crease isn't too bad and it occurs up near the, the distal end where your level darter arrow is thicker and flexes less, but just something to try and avoid. So I roll it on my thigh, side down it, tweak it a little bit if I need to, and then move on to the next one. One thing I forgot to do with this piece is uh, wash it off. It gets it's kind of dirty after you first harvest it. So after I dry it, I generally just take a rag, wet rag, and wipe it down. Now I'm going to come back and straighten it by the nodes. So I don't know if you can sight down it and see, but it's still pretty crooked here. So we're going to hit these nodes up. And especially the nodes, since you're tending to concentrate the heat more into a small area, it doesn't take much heat. Alright, so I successfully straightened it where I want it, which is from here to here for an arrow. And, uh, you know, the process is the same for a dart, it's just a little bit more challenging because it's larger, longer. And the next thing I'm going to do is clean up these nodes so you can see where the stem for the leaf came off. When you harvest it, you can just bend that back usually and snap it off. And then to clean it up, Take your knife and just whittle that off carefully. You don't want to cut into the segment below it. It's the, the same process with the bamboo, the Asian bamboo. 
Both of these are giant grasses. Just one's from Asia and one's from North America. So I've got this little stem left over. I'm just going to take the tip of my knife and pop that out of there like that. And then I'll take some rough sandpaper. This is 60 grit. Fold it like so. And just sand down that node. I'm not going to take the time to sand it down so it's perfectly smooth. The one thing that kind of weakens it, weakens the shaft at the node. And I don't really find it necessary. Just looking to smooth it up really a little bit. And this process isn't at all necessary on that little darts. Now what I want to do is match it with my previous arrows. And again, it's the same process with a dart. I just hold up the, the two shafts. So I've got an arrow here that is working well for me. And I'm just going to kind of hold them together and roll them and make sure that the diameter feels the same. So that's really all, all I do to match shafts occasionally. If you're making arrows this way, you'll get some that don't work, but that's just the part of making an arrow from natural material. Now I'm going to put the knock into the end of the arrow shaft. And to do this, again, it's the same process on bamboo. I'm going to whittle in from one side, just make a flat cut in. I'm going to flip it over and try and make a flat cut opposite to the last one. With bamboo you may have to cut in a little bit deeper because the walls tend to be a little bit thicker than river cane. But that's the goal I'm cutting in so I get that hollow interior. And I'm just going to whittle this off. Now I've almost got a knock already. I'll take my knife, just work that out a little bit. You can grip it up here to support it so you don't split it. If you do split it, it'll be okay because you're going to bind this and support it with a wrapping at the base of this so it doesn't split when you fire it. Otherwise the string of the bow, once you release it, will just split through that cane. So you have to have a wrapping underneath this knock. Now I'm going to take some finer sandpaper. This is 180 grit. I'm use various grits. I'm going to fold it like so. Just put it inside that that knock and pull it through. Because the cane can be sharp, it can have sharp edges that could damage your bowstring. So we're just smoothing it up a little bit. Smooth up the tips of the knock. And that's it. Got a knock for our arrow. Next step is I'll take this 60 grit paper again and I'm going to sand off this outer rind. You'll do this with any kind of binding you do on cane or bamboo because that outer rind has that natural wax coating on it and it's slick so the string and the glue will have a hard time adhering to it. If you want to cut down the cane you can use a little saw, a little fine tooth saw, or you can just whittle around your knife and snap off the end and then clean it up. So that's what I'll do here. I find a little Japanese saw, fine teeth works really well for this too. So whenever I'm cleaning up a segment like this, 
where I've cut it off, I never want to whittle away from me like that. If I grip the outside edge of this and I'm whittling away, it's going to split that cane. So I take my knife and I use it as you would a paring knife. And just kind of carefully go around and whittle it flat, kind of in a circular motion. So you're spinning the shaft as you do it. If you do split it, it's probably okay. You can put a binding on there and uh, bring it back together. It's good enough. And then, same thing. I'll just take my sandpaper, sand around the end of this socket. I'm going to put in the Shaft. All right now I've sanded this end for the socket here. I'm just going to put on a little bit of high glue. This is tight bond genuine high glue. Easy to use if you don't want to heat up your own. And it's you know it's pretty much high glue. It has a couple of added additives in it, but they occur naturally so and they're pretty small quantities in there and I use linen thread uh, I tend to try and avoid artificial sinew because it's not natural it's a um, wax coated nylon and I don't like the thought of losing my projectiles out in the woods you can use real sinew you can use um, whatever you want obviously, but this linen thread is not quite as strong as real sin sinew, but it holds up pretty well as long as you don't just nail a rock directly. Sometimes then it will fail at the socket, but my experience it holds up pretty well for these sockets. Once I get up to the end, I'll do another layer of it going back and once again the process will be the same on outlet darts trim off you can just glue down the end if you want I just uh, tend to just do a half hitch here at the end And the glue under there will pull that down. Now what we need to do is ream out the socket because you can see the wall of the cane there. It will be the same way with bamboo except bamboo will have a even thicker wall so this will be even ch more challenging but uh, that's not too bad. I use an old pocket knife that's worked down pretty thin. Uh, for this. So if you can find a thin knife, a narrow knife, that's going to allow you to put it in there. It's easier to do it on darts because they're larger diameter obviously. You're just going to take your knife and holding it at an angle, simultaneously turn the cane. And what this does is it actually weakens the socket a little bit, which means that when you put the foreshaft in, the cane actually gives a little bit, and the cordage stretches, and it allows you to fit that foreshaft in with friction. So if you create a just a perfectly a, a diameter of the tang of your foreshaft that's the perfect size of the natural hollow cane and then there's a, a 90 degree shoulder right there that has a tendency to snap off so what you want which I'll show in, in a minute when you make when I make the foreshaft is a tapered end top of the foreshaft so for both of those reasons for a friction fit 
and to create a robust joint between the main shaft and fore shaft. You know, hollow it out, ream it out like that. Okay, now for this LL dart, which sizes up to my old one pretty well, I'm actually going to use sinew for the socket. I use linen thread on these pretty frequently as well, and it works really well, but just this video I'll use real sinew, so this is deer backstrap sinew. Get this off of uh, deer tenderloins or any uh, big ungulate that you, you hunt. And uh, it's the silver skin on the, the tenderloin, the backstrap. So generally how I do it is I lay the, the tenderloin down with the silver skin down on the cutting board and cut along it with my knife at about that angle and uh, the knife has a tendency to kind of slide along the silver skin there, the tendon, and then I hold it at a 90 degree angle and scrape off the rest of the meat and then just hang it up and let it dry. Once it dries, you can take it and pull it into strips. And uh, this is about the best sinew you can get on an animal. It goes off in these big long pieces. So, a couple pieces like that will be plenty to wrap this socket. Once I got that, I'm just going to put it in the water. Same deal here. I've sanded about a little over an inch, about an inch and a half at the end of this. I'm just going to put on some high glue. This tight bond is really um, very convenient to use. You can get granulated high glue that you soak in water and heat up. Or obviously you can make your own high glue. I've done all those but I really like the convenience of this stuff. And then once your sinew has soaked up enough water and gotten pliable, you just wrap over it. And I'll wrap up pretty close to the end, not all the way to the end of it. And at this point, see how it lays down nicely there? Just put on a little bit more high glue. And that'll be it. You can do the knock of the dart at the node down here, and that's what I've done here. So you basically just cut it off right above that node and work the node down as your knock. What I've started doing is inserting a piece for the knock. This is usually I'm using willow. So I'll cut it off right here, bind it, and I'm going to insert that little piece just as I would the fourth shaft. Once it bounces, it's solid in there. Any extra glue, I'll put down on that whipping. So this does create a little extra work here, but the uh, reason I do this is it makes the dart quieter coming off the knot of the outlet. So 
especially something like willow. Uh, it doesn't have to be a really strong wood back here at the knock, so willow works really well for this. In this case, I'm using ash, so I don't have any willow handy. Um, so you can use different woods. But uh, it also helps you size your shafts to one another really closely. Because if you're stuck putting the knock at the node every time, that can mean that it's a little bit harder to get the sizing the same between your darts. Now to make the actual little indention here at the end of the knock itself, I'm just going to take my knife and on ash there's kind of a little hollow cavity in it. Willow has a central pith. So generally you're going to put the tip of your knife in that central cavity, hold it at an angle, and turn it Now I'm going to make four shafts for arrows and outlet darts. I usually make these out of black focused, which is an extremely hard and resilient wood that splits easy. So you can use other hardwoods as well. I've also used Osage Orange. Of course, you can use saplings. oak dowels, uh, three-quarter inch oak dowels for arrows and half inch oak dowels for darts. You can see how easy this stuff splits and once you get it down to about the size you want you just whittle it down about pretty close to what I want, so I'm just going to whittle it down into a round dowel kind of shape. This may take a bit of practice for you to get to a point where you can quickly eyeball it and whittle it down to the shape you want. I know probably about down here is where I'm going to make the tang for it to fit into the arrow. It's a little bit crooked there, so I'm actually just going to whittle, whittle it down selectively on one side to straighten it out. Okay, so that's pretty decent. It's not perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. Function well though. Then you just take, take some heavy sandpaper, this is 60 grit, give it a quick sanding, turn it in, in your hand as you go. Okay, now when I make a four shaft for a dart, I'll actually use a rasp to taper it at the end. But for arrows, I use one of these taper tools, it's basically just a special pencil sharpener type thing. If you use quarter inch oak dowels, you will have to sand it a bit to fit it into this taper tool with rough sandpaper. But this ensures that the field point fits on there nice and smooth. Now we need to create the tang, as I call it, for this four shaft to fit into the socket. And this is really the trickiest part. It helps to have a straight four shaft. Basically, you just going along it, turning it, whittling it, eyeballing it, and trying to get this tang straight so that it will fit into the socket straight.
and then as you go, check the fit. That one actually worked the first time. Usually I have to check the fit several times, sand it, whittle it a little bit more until it fits. And uh, oftentimes you have to turn it in there until it is straight in the main shaft. So that one's actually going to work out pretty well. Sometimes it doesn't work at all, but that'll work. Now for the dart, the process is the same. Just a bigger force shaft. The process is very similar, I should say. Okay, now once I get it down to a kind of a roughed out shape like this, I'm going to go ahead and use my rasp. I'm going to use the finer side of the rasp. You can actually forego using a rasp on this, just use heavy sandpaper and a knife. So you can get away without the rasp. Okay, the hard part. It's fitting on this field point so it's on there even. And this is the part where I find the rasp really handy. You want to start off with kind of a dulled shape like that at the end. And then we'll even it up with the rasp. How to do that? You just turn it slowly as you work around it. And just eyeball it and try and make an even taper in towards the end. Okay, there you go. Pretty even fit. And of course you don't have to use a field point if you don't want to. You can just use a sharpened end. It's even easier, but it, it tends to be a lot more durable this way. Now when I work down these tangs where they fit into the socket, you're making kind of a shoulder. So my knife digs in like that and I pull out but it's a tapering shoulder. As I mentioned before, that tends to be a lot stronger than if you had a straight shoulder in for the tang. That will result in a snapped off tang inside the socket, which is a pain to get back out. All right, so hopefully you can see this. this is a pretty nice smooth fit in here. I'm going to glue it in. And of course, you can make these removable where you don't glue them in. If you do that, what people in the past did is they made this tang longer, and it's pretty much the same diameter as the interior of the, the cane once you get past the reamed out portion. It's the same way on ancient artifacts. If you have that tang longer, it's going to fit in more snugly, and you'll have a less less opportunity or uh, less chance of having that four shaft fall out in flight. Just sand this up a little bit and we'll be done. So regarding putting a four shaft into bamboo, bamboo has a lot uh, thicker wall than river cane so you're gonna ream it out like I said and then work down this four shaft tang to fit in. It's gonna probably look like something like this compared to the river cane which had a just a larger tang. So these can be pretty finicky to make. You just have to carefully whittle them down, keep checking the fit. As you put them in there and turn them in that socket, it will polish the wood and you'll be able to see where it's, it's still wearing and you still need to take it down. And then it's just a matter of using your knife and some heavy sandpaper and very carefully whittling that down and checking the fit till you get it right. What's going to keep this junction strong is the glue bond up here at the base of that socket. What I'm going to go ahead and do now is glue on a field point. So I'll glue this one onto the dart force shaft. Before I do that, I'm going to use some alcohol. This is denatured alcohol. You can use rubbing alcohol as well. 
and a Q-tip, and I'm going to swab out the interior of these things because these uh, field points come coated in some oil to keep them from rusting in the package. So make sure you're swabbing out the interiors before you glue them on. We'll let this dry for just a minute. Okay, now this step, I'm still using a petroleum-based glue. Just a, um, this is like a, a strong, uh, just hot, hot glue, hot milk glue. So if you have any ideas on organic glues that can be used to glue on field points, please put them in the comments. A bit of glue on there. Just pop the field point on. I'm going to heat up the field point now. I'm going to use some pliers to grip the field point, spin it, get glue covering everything and push it on tight. You can push it down on a hard surface. If you have some water or a wet rag, now's the time to use that to cool this thing down quicker. The real key to make these things stay on there if you're target shooting is to make sure that this taper from the wood into the the field point is nice and smooth, you don't have any edges sticking out, and, but even then occasionally you will lose these things in targets, so just if you go shoot at a competition or something, just have a few extra. And then once again I'm just using the tight bond high glue to glue in the foreshaft, put some on the tang of the foreshaft, spin it as you put it in. and turn it until you get a straight fit. Looks good right there. And you can kind of drop it on a hard surface to make sure it's in there really solid. That's a couple of things to do here. Just put on some shellac over the bindings. You can buy it ready mix like this. I think it's more advisable to buy it in granular form and mix it yourself. It just comes from the lac bug in Southeast Asia and is mixed with alcohol so it's natural waterproofing to, pro to proof these bindings which are covered over in high glue and that's water soluble. So I'll let that dry and generally do two or three coatings at the, the sockets and just one coating back at the uh, fletchings. And then of course we'll want to oil this wood and I like to use tongue oil, natural tongue oil. Uh, this stuff is made by Real Milk Paint. There's a couple different brands that make or that sell the natural stuff. This one's mixed with some pine I think to some pine solvent. We'll just oil this wood up a little bit and help protect it. And then we'll be finished once that dries.